Hey, good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, September the 15th, uh, 2022, and I hope you're having a great day. hope you're having a beautiful evening. I have had to re pre-record this, I mean, just a little earlier, like right now here, it's it's 3.45, so it's just, just about a little over an hour ago I uh, had to record this, but because, um, the, as I mentioned um, yesterday, that today I have a, uh, today and then the next two Thursdays, um, there's a class that I'm teaching uh, in a different place, uh, or I'm teaching online, but it's with a different. It's with the National Jewish Fellowship of the Assemblies of God that people have um, signed up for, and so forth. And so I'm teaching that class uh, 
uh, today from 4.30 to just after 6. So that's why this isn't live today, um, but it's practically live. So good evening every, uh, to everybody. I can pretty much, for the most part, guess who will be on here at some point. So good evening uh, to my mom, or at least who would be here live generally. Good evening to my mom. Uh, I love you. Hope you're doing well. And to the Eddies, to Lauren and Mike and David and Levi and Valor and Haven and Everett and to Elizabeth and Jesse and good evening to Kathleen and to Sonia and Margarita and to Ron and Amy and to Kelly Kenfield and Kelly and Melody Woods and to Barbara Callahan and good evening to Joshua Stavos. Uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, good evening to Pastor and Sister Martinez, to Misty. Um, and, uh, let's see, who am I missing? I don't, uh, if I missed someone, then I, I'm sorry, but anyway, and, uh, we're going to take, uh, so today was, today was supposed to be Isaiah 19. We're going to do Isaiah 19 tomorrow. Um, Isaiah 19, um, you know, I've gone through doing the translation and everything and, and studying through it, but I hadn't fully prepared it. And it's one of my very favorite uh, passages in Isaiah. It's incredible. Uh, and so I'm going to hold that for while we're live tomorrow. Um, so just hang on there. And then today, what we're going to do is just we're going to look at some of the Psalms, um, some of the Psalms that are associated with today. Um, as I've told you in the past, you know, growing up, uh, we would read um, as a, for our family devotions uh, during different seasons of our lives. We would read five psalms, and so whatever the date was, we would read a psalms associated with that date. So on the fifteenth, we would read Psalm fifteen, and then you add thirty every thirtieth psalm. So fifteen, forty-five, seventy-five, one hundred five, and one thirty-five. Of course, doing that every day, then in the over the course of a month, you read the entirety of the psalms. Well, we're going to look at a few of today's psalms, um, Psalm 15 and Psalm 105 and 135. And, and really in these psalms today, what we see is, is this reality that the impact right, the, of the work of God in people is to have an overflowing effect. Right? And ultimately we see there's to be an overflowing effect uh, to the nations. And then starting with an overflowing effect to your family, an overflowing effect to your neighbors. Uh, and so, you know, I've, I've entitled today's, May He Who Makes Peace on His High Places Make Peace Upon Us and Upon All Israel and say, Amen. You know, oh, say shalom bim ramath. You know, we, we know that, uh, that tune. And, and what that basically is saying is, as it is in heaven, let your kingdom the peace that is there, may that peace be upon us. May, may your will be accomplished here. May the, the impact, if godliness, if there's the work of God that is taking place, then may it have that overflowing impact in my home, in my neighbor, among my neighbors, in the world. And we see that in Psalm 15. I want to open up the reading from Matthew chapter 6. When Yeshua told us, this is how you're to pray. He says, uh, when you pray, therefore, pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, sanctified, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your desire, what you want, may it be accomplished. May it be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So here's this prayer, and so um, that we all know well, and it's saying, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And and so when we open up in Psalm 15, this is also uh, Psalm 15 is a psalm of entrance. It's an entrance into the field of the Lord or into the tent of the Lord entering into his presence. So when we talk about a prayer and we're coming to him, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. You know, there's the, the question that this psalm opens up with is, well, who gets to, who may, uh, the, and the word is, the root, the root word is ger, who may sojourn, who may be uh, 
and someone who normally would be an outsider, a sojourner, who may dwell, who may sojourn in your tent, right? Who, who can graze in your fields, Lord? He opens up Psalm 15, Psalm of David, Adonai, who may dwell, who may sojourn in your tents or in your fields? Who may live, who may dwell on your holy mountain? And the word for dwell, to dwell, dwell here is the word shakhan, so it's related to the word mishkan, which would point to the tabernacle. Um, and so who can, who can enter into this tent, into this hiding place, into this place of your presence, right? Into this place that is, that is marked by your glory. Who can, who can dwell there? Because we're outsiders. Who can sojourn there? And after, the, the answer is given, given here, and it has nothing to do with the sacrifices, right? It has nothing to do with, um, well, you have to bring, you know, uh, a pure, you know, you have to bring a, a, a lamb or you have to bring a, um, you know, a calf or bring two turtle doves. It doesn't have to do with the sacrifices. Instead, the Lord responds to the question with an answer that, that really points toward the character of the one entering, Right? In, in many ways, the Psalm 15 becomes an early expression of what we later read really throughout the prophets, you know, where, where the prophets are saying, what do you think, you're going to come to the Lord with, uh, with your religious offerings? The Lord wants you. The Lord wants you to live a life that reflects, that, that is in line with who he is. All right, so may your will, may what you desire be accomplished in me. Not, you know, there's the passage in Jeremiah chapter 7 where, um, where Jeremiah, the Lord through Jeremiah, says to the people, you know, hey, the, your words are empty. You come and you say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. But you treat it like it's a, rock, uh, a, a, a thief's den. You know, thieves who could go and do whatever they wanted and then they'd run back into their den and they'd hide out with impunity, you know, no punishment, no consequence, they could hide out. He says, that's how you're treating my tabernacle. You go, you do whatever you want, and then you, and you do what's not in line with my heart. You're not even trying to walk in line with my heart. And then you run back in here, and this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. I've t home base, safe. He says, no, 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 that's not what I want. I don't want empty religious exercise. I don't want where you think you can say the right words in the right place. Um, you know, but you're not right. And so that's who can dwell in your presence. So it, he, you know, in my, my, Micah chapter six, a passage we're all familiar with, what, with what shall I come before the Lord? You know, what Micah says, the Lord said, with what, what do I bring to him? What do I bring to the Lord? What does he, does, what does he require of me? With what shall I come before the Lord? Verse six. With what shall I bow myself before God on high? Shall I present him with burnt offerings, with year-old calves? Verse 7, will Adonai be pleased with thousands of rams, with rivers, hordes of rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my belly for the sin of my soul? We get the answer, he's told you. Human, O oh humanity, what is good? And what Adonai is desiring or seeking from you. Only that you, to practice justice, to love chesed, to love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. That's what I want, he says from you. And again, you know, when you look in Psalm 50, another word of rebuke. Where the Lord says, what, do you think, you think I'm, I need, I want your sacrifices like, you think I'm asking you because I'm hungry? I, I have the cattle on a thousand hills. That's not what I want from you. Like, who can dwell in the tents of the Lord? What is it that he desires? Right? And the desire is that we, that we not isolate our relationship with God from the relationship with our neighbor. Right? They're, they're intricately tied together that there should be an overflow, that if I love the Lord, that there should be an overflow into the way that I love my neighbor. If somehow I, I draw this line 
this draw this distinction. Well, here now I'm in this place of worship. I'm in this place where I'm glorifying God or I'm bringing the sacrifices and so forth. And yet then there's this disconnect from the manner in which I live my life, in which I treat my neighbor. Well, that's not what reflects the heart of God. This is what he requires of you, to do justice, to love mercy, love chesed, to walk humbly with your God, right? So if you want to, he says, to enter into my place, you've got to bring your neighbors too. (laughs) Your neighbors are also invited. Well, who is my neighbor? You know, that's the question that the guy asked Yeshua. Who's my neighbor then? And Yeshua paints a different picture than he might have imagined. He might, you know, in in the story of the Good Samaritan. Who can enter into the tents of the Lord? Verse 2, the one who walks with tamim, with integrity, with simplicity. There's this all-encompassing, the the tamim speaks to simplicity, but a wholeness. It's all-encompassing. The one who walks with, on the outside, and where there's a solidarity between what you see on the outside and what's going on on the inside who does what is right, who accomplish, who does what is righteous and speaks truth in his heart, right? So that there's this, this uh, the, the opening, it says, this is what integrity is, one who walks with integrity, wholeness, right? And what does that look like? Well, he does, his actions are right, the outward is right, Because it's the overflow of what's in. He speaks truth in his heart. You see that that those two things together, there's truth in his heart overflowing to an action that is right. That's integrity. That one says to walk in integrity, to walk in simplicity on the outside, to do acts, to do the acts of righteousness overflowing from truth in your heart accomplishing what is righteous right that's what that's what it, what um, uh, God desires right and the and the overflow of truth in your heart will be truth on your lips so we see that in verse three Wait, who can enter the one walking integrity he he acts in righteousness he produces or makes righteousness he speaks truth in his heart right there's truth inside. And verse 3 says, and who does not slander with his tongue. And the word used for slander here, ragal, um, he, he's, it has to do with kind of stealthy, secretive nature, the, a secretive nature of that kind of talk. So he's not, he's not like whispering and, and, and playing games with people. He doesn't slander with his tongue, nor does he wrong his neighbor. And he does not disgrace his friend, right? So he isn't, he's not whispering against another. He's not doing evil or bringing calamity upon his neighbor. And he does not disgrace or, or herfaz, humiliate the one close to him, his friend, right? So verse four continues, it says, who despises a vile person, who thinks lightly of or holds as small a vile person, but honors those who fear Adonai. Who, so, so this first part talks about the condition of your heart that when there's someone who is basically rejecting the Lord um, that he sees, he doesn't exalt them and make them large, but he makes them small. You know, like um, one of the things that, that we see in our, often in our society is um, different different acts of um, criminality, let's say, are, are glorified often. That in some circles, gangster life is glorified. Whether that is, you know, gangster, inner city gangsters or mob, you know, Italian gangsters, it's glorified. And then the people want to be the people like emulate that stuff for some reason they glorify it they that i want to be like that and uh this the one who can enter into the heart of the lord into the temp, tent of the lord doesn't look at wickedness and think i like that you know i i've often heard people glorify when when someone when people get away with stuff when they're when they're cleverly dishonest 
I've heard people express things like, man, if he could do it, if he can get away with it, more power to him, you know? Uh, and, and that is not integrity. And that is not pleasing to the Lord. And in our, if we are to be in the presence of the Lord, we're to be, we're to take on his mindset, to be growing into his likeness that, that what his will is in heaven should be being done in us. So that when we see something that's uh, vile or some, someone that's rejecting, the word for vile here is a, a rejecting one, a, a nimas, a, a, someone who's rejecting the Lord, that that's not glorified, but it's made small and contemptible, who, who considers small that, but, re, but, but honors or glorifies kavod, weighty, esteems, gives honor to those who fear the Lord. What he lifts up is those who fear the Lord. Now my mind and my heart are in the right place. Continues, who keeps his oath, who honors one's o- his oath to, even when it hurts, to the point of calamity, it says, and does not change or does not exchange it, doesn't substitute, right? So... Um, He's not to be taking bribes. He's not to be dealing with and glorifying that, glorifying um, that kind of uh, corruption. But he's to be honoring those who fear the Lord. And he's, and he's one who keeps his oath even when it costs him something, even when it's painful to the point of pain, pain and does not exchange it. So... Um, you know, this, the overall right now, the, it's saying that if there's going to be a trustworthy world that reflects the tent of the Lord, that we, we as a people who are going into his presence should be being made into his likeness, right? And so with integrity, with what's inside of us flowing out, that speech builds up, it doesn't tear down. Filled with integrity, keeping our promises. Verse five, who lends his money without usury, right? He doesn't give with interest, and he takes no bribe against the innocent. One who does these things will never be shaken. Right, so there's there's a generosity, there's a reflection of the character of God. There's a reflection of him, and who's not somehow only looking out for doing what it, taking bribes against the innocent. No, he's interested in what is right, what is just, not what profits him. Right, that, but that one who is focused on that can't be shaken, won't be shaken if you're walking in that kind of integrity. And we, we actually, you know, um, we see in Isaiah chapter 33 um, the way that a corrupt world, um, the way the Lord deals with the corruption in the world. So who, we want to enter into the tent of the Lord and the overflow of his work in our life should be overflowing in the world where we live. It says, sinners are afraid, in Zion are afraid, Isaiah 33, 14. Trembling has seized the godless. Who among us can live with the consuming fire? Who among us can live with everlasting burnings? Verse 15, one who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who refuses unjust gain in extortion, who shakes hands free of bribes, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking on evil. He will dwell on the heights. His refuge will be an impregnable cliff. His bread will be provided, his water assured. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will gaze at a far distant land. Who can enter into the tent of the Lord? Your heart will meditate on terror, verse 18. Where is the counter? Where is the weigher? Where is the counter of towers? You will no longer see the fierce people, the people of speech too obscure to comprehend with the stammering tongue no one understands. Look upon Zion, city of our festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem as a quiet home, a tent that will never be folded, its stakes never pulled up, its cords never broken. For there the majestic one, Adonai, will be for us, a place of rivers and wide canals on which no boat with oars will go, nor any mighty ship will travel by. For Adonai is our judge. Adonai is our lawgiver. Adonai is our king. He will save us. 
right? Who can enter into the tent of the Lord? Well, we want the Lord to fill this place. Your kingdom come. Let your peace, let that peace, that city of our peace, that quiet home, let that be accomplished in us as it is in heaven. Let that be accomplished in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in the place where we stand. Amen? A pure heart, that's what I long for. A heart that follows hard after thee. Your heart, that's what I long for. A heart that follows hard after thee. A heart that hides your word. So that sin will not come in. A heart that's undivided. One you rule and reign. A heart that beats compassion. That pleases you my Lord. A sweet aroma of worship. That rises to your throne. Pure heart, that's what I long for. Heart that follows hard after thee. Pure heart, that's what I long for. Heart that follows hard after thee. All right, Psalm 105. Praise the Lord. Praise Adonai. Make no, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell about all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek Adonai rejoice. Seek Adonai and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember his wonders that he has done. His miracles and the judgments, the governance of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Like, remember him. Bring him back to mind. Keep him in the front of your mind. He is Adonai, our God. He is our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Right. So this idea, this, the, the goal is for his judgments, his justice, his mishpat to fill the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations, which he made with Abraham and swore to Isaac. And confirm to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I give the land of Canaan, the portion of your inheritance. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and foreigners, they were outsiders, they were sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Verse 16, now he begins to recount those wonders of God. He says, he called down a famine on the land. He broke the whole supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. So he's talking about how the Lord, the Lord broke the supply of bread. He brought the famine to Egypt, but he had put Joseph there in preparation Joseph's going through his turmoil. Joseph's going all through, through all he's going through, not knowing that God has placed him there for a reason for this season. Joseph sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with shackles. He was put in irons till the time that his word came true. Until the time his word arrived, it came. The word of Adonai proved him true. The king sent, released him. The ruler of the people set him free made him lord of his house, ruler of his possessions, to discipline his princes at his will and teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came into Egypt. Jacob sojourned into the land of Ham. He made his people very fruitful, made them more numerous than their foes. He turned their hearts to hate his people, to deal shrewdly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They performed his signs, and among them miracles in the land of, of Ham. He sent darkness, and it was dark, so they did not rebel against his words. He turned their waters into blood, causing their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in their royal chambers. He spoke, and a swarm of gnats came within their, all their borders. 
He gave them a rain of hail, flames of fire throughout the land. He struck their vines and their fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came, young locusts without number, to eat up every green thing in their land and eat up the fruit of the ground. Then he struck all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their vigor. Then he brought them out with silver and gold and no one among his tribes faltered. Egypt was glad when they left for dread of them had fallen on them. He spread a cloud as a covering and a fire to give them at night. They asked and he brought quail and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened a rock and waters gushed out, flowed as a river in dry places. For he remembered his holy word to Abraham his servant. So he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations so they inherited the labor of the people so that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. Right? So you have this picture of the, all the Lord has done, all he's brought you through in the deliverance, and I'm ultimately bringing you into a place so that that place can be transformed for his glory, for his ways to be established in that place. That's what the Lord wants to do in us and through us, that his purposes would be accomplished. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, um, again, tomorrow we'll be back live. We'll be back in Isaiah chapter 19. Um, and, uh, but I pray that today's daily manna was right on time, right on time for what the Lord needs to speak to all of us, that he wants to do a genuine purifying work in our hearts. And sometimes when you're walking through a season like Joseph walked through, where you're going thrown into a pit and you find yourself in a prison and you don't know what God is doing, that he is allowing you to be there for that time. That sometimes he'll break the supply of bread, whatever, is it, whatever it's going to take for people to look to him, to call upon him, to turn to him. God's desire is to work in us and through us, that we would demonstrate his love and demonstrate his life and his light to a hurting and broken world. Amen? All right. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom. Have a beautiful evening. Let me be as good
yeah.